Okay. Well, it's one o'clock, so we'll get started. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. I know it can be very, very busy to take time out of your day at the medical centre, um, but hopefully you'll get a lot out of this session. Um, this is an introduction to PenCS CAT4. Um, it's a really fantastic program, so um, I hope you'll get plenty out of this. Um, before we begin, um, I'd like to um, also tell you that my name is Juliet. Um, I'm one of the program officers here. Um, and I'd just like to um, acknowledge the country today. Uh, Northwestern Melbourne Primary Health Network would like to acknowledge the peoples of the Kulin Nation as the traditional custodians of the land on which we're meeting today. We recognise their con continuing connection to the land, waters and culture, and I would like to pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping before we proceed. Um, if you can please keep your microphones on mute. Um, so if you hover over your screen, you should be able to see a um, button like this or a little um, icon with a microphone and make sure that there's a line through it to say that you're muted. Um, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them via the chat box. Uh, if you keep it to everyone, everybody is going to see it. So that would be for more general stuff like related to using the PEN um, CAT pr program. Um, if you've got anything like technical, then it's best to um, use that drop down box that says everyone there. There's another option there that says NWM PHN um, education. And if you click that, then you can send a message through if you're having trouble, for example, with your sound or whatever. And um, behind the scenes, uh, my colleagues, Phil and Claire, can work together to help you with those issues. Okay, there will be, if there's time, there will be a Q&A at the end of the presentation. However, don't let that stop you. If you do have any questions, um, I encourage you to put them in there because anything that we don't get to cover today, we can um, revisit with your um, people that support you, your relationship managers. They can come back to you and help you with your questions. So we'll, we'll ferry those questions off to those individual people to help you. Um, they will be anonymous to protect your privacy and um, I should add that the session is being recorded. Um, lastly, if you don't um, have your name showing underneath your photo, um, what you can do is just hover over your photo. There will be a three dots that will show up. You click on the three dots and you can say rename or click on rename and then you can put your name in there. That would be really helpful because then we can follow up with you individually if we don't get time to answer your question. So please do ensure that your name is showing there. All right, moving right along. So we're about to hear from um, Manfred, and I forgot to check your um, how you pronounce that wonderful last name, but I'm going to say Kateshna um, from right. NCS, and you can correct me in a moment if I'm wrong. <laughs> um, he's a multidisciplinary professional with customer service and IT technical experience and a marketing background. He's been working um, with GP networks, Medicare locals, and similar types of organisations for over 15 years. Um, and he's had extensive collaborative involvement in lots of um, local um, public health services and wider area um, health service implementation. So take it away, Manfred. Great, thank you. If we can move on to the next slide, uh, a slide. thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I'm from PENCS. Yes. Uh, I work with Northwestern Melbourne PHN on the distribution of CAT+. Plus. And what we do today is sort of give you a bit of a, a feel on CAT4 and how it fits into your uh, basic day-to-day uh, -day work. Now, what we see here is uh, on, on that slide is when we talk about the CAP Plus ecosystem, we talk about how you can achieve team care uh, arrangements, team care work with uh, our products. And that means how one uh, uh, application can connect with the other application. And uh, when we talk about connecting, and in that case, what we can see, we can see here the, the three products, Pat, Cat, Cat4 and Top Bar. Cat4 will be what we will be discussing today. Cat4 is a, uh, a, 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 a analytical tool which lets you, based on hand of a data extract and filters, uh, look into uh, the accords of patients and uh, compare that one with uh, reports on the various, uh, various uh, sections such as smoking, blood pressure, HbA1c's, uh, immunizations, uh, and so on. 
So it's a clinical audit tool. It works off a data extract. Uh, and I will get to that one a little bit more. Now, because I have on there top bar, top bar uh, is a decision support tool. It works at the point of care when your clinicians, your doctors, your nurses, or your receptionist handle and deal with patients at the point of uh, care when they're coming in. Then the top bar will prompt for missing information or show if a patient is eligible for the one or the other MBS item numbers uh, and so on. So as I said, TOP is a decision support tool. It works uh, in real time. It connects you to clinical software and prompts you with all sorts of uh, available information. cat is a uh, is an audit tool which uh, works off a data extract. Can we go to the uh, next slide? So uh, while I'm going to the next slide here, so we see here the ecosystem. We have here cat on the left-hand side, TOP on the right-hand side. In the middle, there's here... Uh, clinical uh, system that could be now medical director, best practice, uh, ZMED, or whatever you're using. And you can see how our, our tools integrate with your clinical software and how our soft software itself, CAT4 and TOPPA, would integrate is through the prompting, uh, prompting system. And that would be sort of a subject to another uh, training session here, how our prompts uh, work. But uh, that's how we connect and communicate. Now, as you can see here, there is data being extracted from your from your clinical software. It's stored on your on your on your computer, and then CAT4 connects to that uh, data extracts and uh, uses it for your reporting needs. So that means when we look into that data here, we are not extracting an era, uh, mirror image from your clinical software, but we extract everything what was last recorded to your patient from your active patient. That means any patient which is currently not marked as deceased or inactive in your clinical software. Only active patients are extracted and only what is last recorded to those patients. So I'll give you an example. If a patient had a blood pressure done uh, in the last six months, every month once, in that ed extract, we will take the latest, ex uh, the latest blood pressure out and leave all the other ones where they are. All right. uh, while we're doing that one, it keeps the data extract small and light, and our tools seem to work best with it. If you wanted to see historical data, how you're progressing over time, you can use timeline uh, functions within the product. And what we do, we will connect from one data extract to another one to, to uh, portray uh, the blood pressure over time, for example. Now, uh, when you are a data sharing practice, you, as you know, you will be sharing a set, a data set with your PHN, and the data set uh, is the identified at your practice, uh, and then securely submitted over to uh, PetCat for your PHN to uh, prepare other reports and to report back on on findings on incentives the PHN is involved in. If they're doing projects or programs, then it's a great way to engage with practices and work hand in hand uh, with, a, with you as a, as a practice to achieve best quality outcomes for not just for your practice, but for your patients mainly. So it's, it's a QI tool to improve the health outcomes for uh, patients. Can we go to the next slide, please? Now, uh, before we start, we have the, the two tools. Uh, so the CAT4 and TOPA, and then there's in the middle is uh, the scheduler. Now, CAT4, as you can see, is uh, co uh, compatible with medical director best practice. So I'm not going through all the, the ones here on the list here, but Communicare, Medinet, MedTech, and down here, as you can see, they're unbolded. They're not as uh, strong in the writing. That means the data extractor is uh, developed and provided by your software vendor. While in here with medical director, best practice genie and ZMED, PENCS has taken on the role of developing the data extractor. All right, so when you're extracting the data for a medical director software genie or best practice, then PENCS is doing it. If you're looking into a data extract from a Communicare, Medinet, MedTech software, then MedTech or Medinet or whatever has provided you with the data extract. And we just provided a tool to analyze the data extract. Now, when we look into TOPA, TOPA currently is, uh, is compatible with medical director best practice in ZMED. We are working now on the release of a non-clinical 
uh, non-clinical uh, dependent uh, top bar. That means that practices which uh, are using any other uh, uh, clinical software types can use uh, top bar and the fourth third party apps uh, like Foxo for communication and uh, care planning and so on. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? To me. To you. Oh, <laughs> so I think that's your cue to open up PIN and show us how to use it. Is that right, Nathan? All right. Uh, let me just uh, stop your sharing and I share my screen here now. Very good. Okay. Um, what, what we had in mind, we will show you how to log into the tool, then I will give you some very practical, uh, basic examples how to use the tool, and then I will hand over to Juliet to go into a little bit more details and show you a couple examples on uh, pathology results in CAT4. Now, when you start CAT4, the first of you do, once you have installed it, and that happens that you might have made contact with your PHN saying, hey, we would like to use the tool, and they run you through the process how to get it. Now, Pencius has installed it at the first time you log in. Well, from then on, you will find an icon on your desktop. You would find it either if you've pinned it to your taskbar, then you would have it on the taskbar, or if you go in your computer under the programs, you would find if you would scroll down uh, a folder which says uh, pens yes and if you click on that one you click on the icon here and then what it does here now it's just checking with the server if there's a newer version if there's a newer version then it would uh, start with a with uh, uh, updating it would say okay new version is available and will ask you do you want to do the update then you say, okay, you'd run the update. In my case, there's no new update. So what I do here, it opens the login window and I just log into the tool uh, with the provided a username and password you would receive from your PHN. And if I got it right, then I should log in nicely. Very good. As you can see here now, why I show that one when I log in, my user account is linked to, I'm a practice manager, I'm working across multiple sites, and I do not want a username for each site. I want to use my one single username, which should work on all my medical sites, all right? So that's why I have a problem. If you just link to one practice, you would just log in and the system will get you right into CAT4. In that case, it asked me in what organization do I want to log in. In my case, I want to use the Manfred training practice today. Want to log in here, click on OK, and it will log me into CAT, uh, into CAT 4. And as you can see, as it opens now here, we got a couple of panels. Now, I will just quickly switch into my training environment uh, because I can't. Uh, the reason uh, I uh, have done it on my desktop now, it would take me a while by the time I select my data extract to populate all the information into the reports and to cut some time, I thought I'd do it in that way. So now let's assume I'm logged in into CAT4 as I've shown you. It will open up here. You have your uh, extract panel, you have your filter panel, and there you have your report panel uh, here down below. All right. Now, as, as you can see here, my uh, case, I have already a number of extracts. In your practice, you have one or more. That depends on for how long you've been using the tool and how often you're extracting data. Usually, it's on a monthly basis. You should have here on a monthly basis a data extract. Now, I have uh, a couple of data extracts which say de-identified. Those are the data extracts I'm using for the training purposes. In your clinic, you would have de-identified extract uh, showing because that's the one uh, you're sharing with your PHN or uh, identifiable data set, which has your practice name or your clinical software from where the data is coming. And it's not uh, marked as de-identified, it's marked with a proper name. Now for you to hide all the de-identified extract at the practice, I would uh, ask you to click on hide and then it will leave you at the practice with only the, the data extracts relevant for your practice. That means that there are no different data extracts, but the one is has identifiable data, the other one doesn't have identifiable data. So if you click on it, you will get uh, no information in the output report, while with the identifiable data you do. So uh, I hope I didn't overcomplicate that one, um, but um, that's what I think would be good for the practice. In my case, because I'm working of a de-identified data set for the training, I have to untick that one here. Now, what we have here, the date when the data was extracted, the time, 
the number of active patients in my data extract and then the, the name. As you can see, I already gone ahead. I just double clicked on it to populate the information into the most common, uh, most commonly used reports in CAT4. So therefore I no longer need that one. I, I just need it if I wanted to switch to an older data extract, if I wanted to do the same on any on on other data extract. But I use always the most recent one, so therefore I don't need it after selecting. Now, what stays left here is that I have my filter panel, I have my uh, report panel, and up here I have a couple of um, buttons. Let's see if we can move the, oh, sorry, that was not what I wanted. There was just a pop-up window here. Uh, you got here the report button, the few population button, cat for cleansing cat, uh, register cat, and daily cat. Now, uh, the cleansing cat, if you click on it, you can click between the, the, the buttons up here anytime. There won't be any any harm in what you're doing and so on. What it does, it just changes the free from CAT4, which is all the reports in CAT4 to the cleansing view, which is only that the views are only the reports available or needed for data quality and uh, data cleansing type of work if you want. Like if you have registers at your practice and they have their own reporting needs, then they can go into the register, register CAT all the, the reports in here are relevant for register uh, registrars for their reporting and their studies. Now, the daily view is a few which we would use in uh, connection to creating prompts in CAT4, which we then can send to top by users that when a patient presents with a matching criteria that a prompt uh, 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 notifies the, the health provider at the point of consultation that there's something you want him to look. Uh, I will go through that one in another session. We won't have just time to do that one today. So what we will do here, I want to go back to my uh, CAT4, to the full report. As you can see, as soon as I go back, I have a whole range and there's a little icon showing me that there are plenty of reports to the right. All right. So uh, I won't be able to go through all the reports, but let's have a look how CAT4 works uh, in 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 its way here. As, it, as I said to you, we're looking at about 12,442 uh, patients across my practice, active patients, by that what I mean, active by my clinical software. Uh, that means that they are not deactivated or are deceased or are inactive, marked inactive. All the patients, other patients which I have in my practice. Now, which sort of kind of puts my first question in when we do uh, 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 RSCGP type work for accreditation, we heard about the active patient, which is different, and it is different. When we look into the active here, and let's have a click, let's click on that one. As you can see, as soon as I click my uh, filter setting here, as you can see here, I'm, I'm tracking down what I have done. And my recalculate button here changes from black to red, saying, hey, you have done a change. Now, you want, do you want the change to take effect? Do you want to look into active patients now? Uh, if I say yes, that's what I want to do. Uh, then I click on that one. Just first in mind, when we look into my current pay population is 12,442. Let's click on recalculate here. And now I can say, I, in fact, I have 5,421 patients which have visited my practice three times in the last two years. And what I cannot see here is any patient which have not visited my practices three times in the last year. Any patients which had just two visits in two years or made free visits in three years. All those patients are excluded. But what it also excludes is any of your new patients to your practice, right? Any patients which started to see your doctor due to whatever uh, reason that might have uh, been diagnosed with diabetes, new to your area, new to your practice, and they just had two visits and you're running certain reports, they will be excluded because what we done here, we excluded all the patients uh, which had not done free visits in the last two years. Now, when would I use it? If I do accreditation type of work, great. Uh, if I do MBS type of work, uh, it's a good reason for using uh, that one. Now, let's have a look. When we look into active patients in, in compared to a report, and let's take uh, blood pressure uh, uh, as, a, as an example here. Now, when we look into here, and the blood pressure, we, if we go here, you can see here there are various reports. I'm looking at active patients. So that's my, my cohort of patients now, my criteria I have set. And now I want to take my reports and I want to see how many active patients I have matching a certain 
uh, condition certain report or whatever it may be I need. And in that case, I want to do blood pressure. Let's go to measures. As you can see, you've got here quite a few report tabs in measures. I'm moving over to blood pressure. <coughs> and as you can see here, <coughs> of my 5,421 patients, I have about 1,378 patients which are not... Uh, which never had a blood pressure recorded since they are with me uh, and on active. All right. If I would compare that one to all my patients and take that one out, you would see here 5,591. So I have more uh, in that way. So let me go back to my active patients because I want to use that filter for today. As you can see here, the number dropped significantly by when I looked into active only. Now, whilst that is great, I can get a list here of my patients which um, I have not had a smoking condition, uh, uh, blood pressure recorded as ever, never reported. And I can show you that one if I click on it and click on export. Then I have here, I can output the name of my patients which had no blood pressure recorded. All right. Now, that report is great in, in, in one way, but let's put a, a couple more examples in to make it a little bit more meaningful. Now, one is great that they never had one, but I want to also know at some point how up-to-date are my patients with a blood pressure, for example. You know, I might say, okay, look, we want to do blood pressure for a certain type of people every six months, every 12 months. In that, that report doesn't give it to me. And that's right. Let's, for example, take that one off. Uh, I just click on it. I can use the clear option here to clear my filters and so on if I wanted to. But in my case, I clicked on it. So I unselected it. I say, okay, I want to compare my blood pressure on my patients based on how up-to-date are the blood pressure. And as you can see here, date range results and date range visits. Now, don't mistake the date range visits because the date range visit goes to a range, a date range when your uh, patient had visited your practice. And that could be six, 12 months. We, in my case, I'm after a result and I want to know when the result was last entered. Is it up-to-date or not? And if I say, for example, in my example, I can provide a date range here or I can be like me, lazy, and I just select six months here and say, okay, let's have a look. Just bear in mind now when we look into uh, the 1300, let's see how many uh, hadn't had a blood pressure taken in the last six months. And you could do the 12 month, 15 months. If you want, in my example, I use uh, six months here. Let me click on that one. As you can see here, in fact, I have 3,733 patients which are not up to date with their blood pressure, considering that they did not have a blood pressure taken in the last six months. Now, again, I can see the ones which are up to date here, you know, uh, the one which are uh, above 30, 180, uh, below 130, 80, and uh, above 140 and 90. Th those three categories are up to date because they had a blood pressure taken in the last six months, but that group here did not have a blood pressure taken in the last six months or may never had had a blood pressure taken at all. Now, if I go in here above that, you can't see it really, but if you go just above the, 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 the table here, you can see that it changes the, to a hand. And if you click on that one, you can sort uh, your, your table here. Okay, let's sort by date up. Uh, not recorded. And if I would scroll down, all those patients did not have a blood pressure recorded since they're with me at my practice here. And if I go and scroll down to a page, I will see at some point I will have uh, a date uh, a date range in. Probably apply a filter before I start searching to that one here. Um, but as you can see, there are quite a lot which did not have a uh, blood pressure recorded, and if I would sort the other one, I can see that uh, the one here, for example, 2009. 2009. Now, if I want to be a little bit more specific and want to say, okay, yes, I want to do that to a chronic complex condition, then I apply a different filter, and I would apply a conditions filter, all right? And if I say, okay, I want to do that one for all my heart patients, then I will select that one. If I want to take the whole group below that I want to say uh, if a patient has hypertension or cardiovascular or heart disease or uh, CHD or stroke or MI enzyme, then you would select the top one because then you have any patient with a cardiovascular diagnosis 
in your report. And that's what I want to do now. Uh, as I said, if you want to be very specific, you could go. Uh, if you would do it in that way, you would create an end search looking for a patient with heart failure and uh, uh, CHD condition. But if I want to look if they have any or all, then that's the way to go. As I can see here, recalculate is on. Now I'm recalculating. As, I, as you can see, I'm dropping my population here now uh, to 1,400 from the 5,000 down to 1,400. And that means that I have about uh, a 1,400 patient uh, with a cardiovascular disease. And if we look in here of those 1,400, 639 are not up to date with their blood pressure. And then you got the ones which are up to date. And if you now click on it again and click on export, then you get the list of the 639 uh, patient here. Now it's a bit more manageable, a bit more meaningful. And if you wanted to, you can go scroll through. Never had a blood pressure recorded to uh, here, whether the, the last one was done in uh, November 2020. Uh, and the oldest was, if you would go the other way, you could see uh, the, the oldest blood pressure was done in 2009 here for that patient. Now you can take all our reports, export it to PDF, HTML, Excel file, and, and so on. If you wanted to take a, 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 a snapshot of that report and use it for your meeting to, to talk to your providers uh, and, and so on. Um, bear in mind, we have here uh, 41 pages. If you wanted to print that report, you have about 41 pages to uh, to print, say, uh, I, I'm a person who says uh, saving it is better than printing it. Uh, if you have uh, a, a subscription with our SMS recall or voice recall, then uh, you can use the function here uh, as well. Now, um, hope, how do I go for time? It's almost 1.30. Almost 1.30. All right. Uh, what I want to show uh, very quickly here is by, uh, if I clear all my filters here, if I want to know a little bit about the quality of my uh, data, how I'm progressing, let me just hide the filters here. And yes, you could use the, the, the filter here for uh, active free in one because what I'm showing you is sort of a bit more about on the accreditation side here when you use CAT4. Uh, under data quality, you have a dashboard or a CDSA uh, report, and it shows you in a color coded how you're progressing. The green one uh, means that I'm progressing well. The, uh, the, the information I'm recording is sufficient. That's great. Uh, it shows me the areas where I need to uh, do more work, and it shows me the areas where I am not doing really, really good or where I need to do a lot more work. And it helps me by looking at the report to sort of uh, refocus my work and really look into the areas I need to improve. And if you can see duplicate patients here, please, uh, I can't, it doesn't work on my de identified data set. So that will be always the worst here. Um, but in your practice, it will be different. But if we look into allergies and adverse reaction uh, medications, as you can see, medication history is done very well. You got a, a report which is uh, corresponding to that uh, dashboard uh, view. And if we look here, breaks it down in the area, allergy status, allergy recorded, coded format, and so on. And if you can see, when I do my allergy status recorded, I'm doing very well. I'm doing almost 100%. It is 97.66% uh, I'm doing. But I'm not doing so, I'm, I'm doing good, but not the best when it comes to the coded format of my allergies and the reaction uh, completed. Now, what it means in the clinical software, if you would go uh, in, in the, the patient file here under allergies, where you can see here there's no reaction or no, no information coded. And if you would say here, a cough, for example, uh, and might be um, the reaction might be something mild, you know, then that's what we are talking about. Uh, one is a free text anyway, but the coded is the format. Is it for what it is, what is the, the severity of it, uh, is it a, a reaction, and so on. That's what we talk about uh, uh, here in, in this format. So as you can see here, now I know where I need to put my emphasis in with my practice in my next meeting. I will raise the topics on to my uh, providers to say, okay, please make sure that you also code, 
use a coded format for your uh, LHGs when you record them and uh, also record the LHGs reaction. Now, that report is supported with another report. If you wanted to break it down, as you can see here, you got here a bar chart with all the, the items here which are following your accreditation standards as well, LHG status, LHGs recorded, not coded, and so on. Now, if I say, okay, my first activity could be for a practice to pick the ones which I can do easy. If I want to show that one in present, I can do that one. Um, but I can select the, the items I would like to use to work on. And if I click here on worksheet, it can output me a worksheet with uh, those 691 patients, uh, which I can then export to an Excel spreadsheet. And when those patients come in, I can work with my providers to, to make sure that we complete the allergy recording for uh, that one. All right, uh, I'm going probably two, two minutes over. Sorry about that one. I might hand over to you, Juliet. Thanks, Manfred. That was really good. Thank you. Um, I will share my screen back to here. Okay, are you seeing a tiger right now? Did that work? Yes, uh, you in presenter mode. Uh, okay, I had trouble with this before, folks. Please bear with me. I will just... Uh, Now, what are you seeing? Presenter mode or full screen? Uh, still presenter mode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we did practice this, but it wasn't any easy for that time either. <laughs> so I'm getting screen one. Okay, screen two. Yes, yes, that's working. Good, 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 good. All right, so I'm just going to quickly share um, a couple of different um, scenarios with you. Manfred's already done some scenarios, so it's similar to that anyway. Now, I need to get out of full screen, though. Excuse me for a moment. Let me just open up my... Oh. So I'm logging in, but I'm, I'm on the other screen where you can't see things because it doesn't want to come across. But anyway, I'll bring my cat for across in just a moment. Okay. And I decided to do it from the start just so that I could show you th through this, although Manfred did a very fine job of it as well. Um, so when you open up, your screen will look very bare like that and you'll go, Where where's all my data? So you need to click over here to show, to show extracts, it said a moment ago before I clicked. And yours will actually be showing here. All of your identified extracts will be showing here. Um, and it's in date order, so the, the one at the top will be the most recent. Um, I don't have any identified extracts. Mine is all de-identified, so I need to go into this one to click on my extract, and it will load. While that's loading, I'll just say that, uh, of course, you don't want to be using the de-identified data yourselves because the aim of the game for you is to really find out who those patients are who are needing, you know, who have the gaps in care. So this is not useful for you. This is really the, the extract that comes to the PHN. Um, so um, yeah, you don't want to click on that um, hide the identified extracts box. You want to just get the ones in the very first box that shows. All right, so I'll close that one. And then to get your filters up, you would um, open this, click this arrow here for filters. Or maybe twice because it's not cooperating today. <laughs> um, Okay, and you'll see it's just loading there. It just takes a few moments, and Manfred mentioned that it, it is a bit slow, but it's worth mentioning. If you try and add filters now, it can um, mess things around a little bit because it's still loading. So it's just worth um, taking the time to um, wait and have a breather for a moment <laughs> while your data loads properly. It looks like it's loaded, but it's still working. So. What I thought I'd show you just quickly is two scenarios, one about um, type 2 diabetes with um, missing HbA1c um, and also out, HbA1c out of range, and then another scenario for um, identifying patients from Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander background for health assessments. So two different scenarios. There's so many things that you can delve into. You've only gotten the tiniest taste today, but there are plenty of... Um, 
plenty of areas that you can look into. So whatever your practice is trying to improve on, you can find um, reports to help you there. So you see all that calculation has finished now, which is wonderful. Um, we do like this active patients um, filter. We have it turned on just about for every activity. Um, so it's very rare that we would not have that one applied. Um, for type 2 diabetes, I would go across two tabs to the conditions tab. And just or let's just say all diabetes is fine too. So it really depends what you're wanting to get and what kind of um, list you're trying to work with. But let's go all, all diabetes. And that's all I'm going to do in the filters for now. And I'm going to hit recalculate just to get my active patients with type 2 diabetes. And always, um, as Manfred pointed out, that, that will show just above your reports, whatever you've selected in the filters will show here. So it says filtering by active patient and conditions diabetes. Say if you were also wanting just to get a sub, you know, section of that population and you click on those parts of the filters, that will also, also show on that spot selected population pyramid of females. Okay, but I don't want to do that. So <laughs> I'm just showing you that it appears there when you select report parts. Um, if you're looking for um, HbA1c for your diabetes patients, it will of course be found under the pathology tab in the report section. And as you can see, first of all, we've got lipids here, but I'm going to go across to HbA1c. And um, we can see here that we've only got, we've got 508 patients with diabetes but we've only got 13 with, um, without a HbA1c recorded. And I wanted to do it this way just to show you the power of the filters, really, um, because you might look at that and go, whoa, we're doing so well. But um, if we go back to the filters and do filter by, age, by um, date range and say we want to find all the people who haven't had a HbA1c in the past year, and we'll add that to the filters, now we'll see, we've actually got 138. So we've just gone up by 90% or something like that, 100%. Um, so that's more like it. They're the people we really want to find and go, oh, we really haven't done this for ages for you. So um, let's find those people. Um, the other thing worth mentioning is over here, you can, you can click a show percentage button. So that's really useful when you're doing quality improvement activities. If you say as a practice, we want to improve the number of people with diabetes who are having their HbA1c on a regular basis and you make that decision and you measure your baseline, you can say at the moment we've got 27%, 27.2% of our patients with diabetes have not had a HbA1c recorded. So that's really useful for quality improvement activities. Then you would do the activity, take another extract and come back and, and re -hit that hit that percentage button to see um, how it's changed. Hopefully it's improved and it's gone down. Um, but for this purpose, we're just wanting to identify the people that haven't had HbA1c and maybe call them into the practice to um, have updated pathology. So you would click on that, that wedge of the um, donut, if you like, of the graph, and go to export to get your list. Now, my list likes to open on the other screen, so I'm just going to drag it across. There we go. Um, and I won't open it as full screen. I'll just make it bigger. There we go. So that's it there. Um, you can, as Manfred mentioned, organize it by date. So we find the people who have had it longest to go first. Maybe it's not particularly useful in this case because they're all people who haven't had one in the past 12 months. So let's get them all in. But for sometimes, for some um, lists that you pull, it can be really useful to reorganize it um, in particular ways. Um, so another example of that might be if you um, are wanting to get the people who are out of range, so they have had a HbA1c in the past 12 months, but they're not doing as well as they could, then you could click on to all of these ones. So it uses the traffic light system. So all of the yellow and orange are sort of indicating that they're out of range, although the pale yellow is within range, but heading towards the top end. Um, I want these guys. So these are all the people that are above 7% HbA1c. And now if I export it, again, I've got to drag it across. Um, and now I'll organize it by their HbA1c level because probably these people with the highest HbA1c are the ones that we'd like to get in first and um, really start to work on improving 
their um, scores. So that's how that works. I will close that one. Just got one more scenario for you. Um, we've got like four minutes left, so <laughs> I'm sort of racing and I hope I'm not racing too much. I will clear my field to selections. Um, I think I only had diabetes and oh, I had the date range as well and the active patients, which I always do put back on. The other scenario I wanted to show you was um, uh, finding people from Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander backgrounds for health assessments. So for that one, again, I've put my active patients on um, and then I would go to the second tab, which is ethnicity, and just tick Indigenous at the top there and that will get all of those three categories there. And did I want to put a date range? Not initially, no. <laughs> all right, so I've hit recalculate again and I've found, well, I'm still on the... HbA1c report, which is not what I want in this case. So for this one, I'm going to go over to the MBS items tab. And um, you, you didn't get to see this with uh, Manfred's demo before because there are many, many tabs to choose from. Um, but this is a really cool one. So this currently is showing the, the ones that have had items claimed. So these are the people as again, filtered by indigenous and active patients. So we've got 36 of those people. Um, these are the people who have had MBS item cl items claimed, but what we want is we want to find the people who could have one but haven't had one claimed. So we'll click on the second tab, which is not recorded, and then you can just choose all the health assessment items. So, or uh, say I'm wanting to do the Indigenous 55 plus. And sometimes with these, it can be very hard to tell that I've selected them. It's not like the donut where they pop out. Um, but you can just keep an eye on this panel here and just make sure that they're all showing. So that one's showing as well, and that one's showing. Beautiful. And I've got 27. Beautiful. So if I hit export, and I'll bring that across, there it's showing 27. And I do like to do that just to do a bit of a manual count and make sure that it's matching as well so that I know that I haven't missed any of my categories. Um, and that's about it. And that's probably all we've got time for. I'm not going to change any columns here. They can just come as they are. They don't need to be reorganized. Um, but I think that's it. So that was very, very short and sweet. Um, Manfred, did you want to jump into saying anything else before I close up? Uh, yeah, uh, if you want any help, we have uh, recipes on our website. I think you will share a list. Yeah, here we go. We've got some okay. resources. Uh, the help.pentest.com.au website, uh, when you log in, has a landing page with um, uh, the, 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 our, our tools. Let me just see if I might just quickly show you uh, the, the screen here, uh, if you don't mind. I might just yep, sure. share screen. Yes, share. All right, um, if you can see, can you see all my screen here? Now on the help.pentius.com website, you have more information about the tool itself, about CAT4, how it works, how the collection works and so on. Um, if you're interested in the underlying information, what's in the reports and what we pull out to, to uh, feed into the report, to report, uh, you will find on the data mapping, the way it works that if, uh, you're a medical director user or a best practice user or a ZMED user, you find your uh, software. If you're, for example, using uh, ZMED, then you will go under ZMED data mapping and then you have the, uh, the information on uh, ZMED. And then if you go into, because of the example of the HbA1c example we had, you can see here that's the HbA1c result you were looking at uh, in the graph before. And that's what we collecting from your clinical software. And if any of these uh, uh, items has been used to describe the HbA1c uh, res uh, pathology result for a patient, then we will count it as, uh, as a HbA1c result. And of course, the date when it was entered. So uh, that's one of the recipes. Uh, please feel free to go onto the recipe page. Uh, all the examples we have shown you today are on that uh, on the website. I've just gone ahead and opened just a couple of recipes for the ones which I had kind of uh, uh, used today. Um, that's what, what we have seen. There's the MBS eligibility tab, but the one which I've shown you with allergy, smoking, or blood pressure, for example. What it is, it's basically 
guides you. It's a walkthrough on how do you need to set uh, the filters and what reports to access and what's the interesting part of the pie chart, bar chart, whatever it is, to identify a certain needs group of patient uh, reflective to your uh, search criteria. So um, that's from my side. I think that will be shared with uh, you after the training session. Yeah, beautiful. And I think I've just got one more slide left just to say, what have I got to say? Um, this one, that we've got another Penseus um, web, uh, webinar coming up next week on 20th of July, at the same time, 1 p.m. to 1.45 p.m., about using CAT Plus in your, in, in your practice with regards to immunisation and vaccinations. That will be a really useful session. And um, coming up in future months, we're going to take some deeper dives into some of the more advanced or intermediate, whatever, <laughs> um, ways that you can